What is good guys, we're here with Sabella versus Karen Smith. Um, I'm gonna bring you more ulti series live that I have live recorded later. But yeah, this one I have not recorded live. I went to sleep early yesterday and I decided to play. But yeah, I can immediately tell you um, this is like a wish killer semi stall type of team. And Karen pretty much has an antler for almost everything. Well, for everything. Uh, Scissor, Waltz Bulu. Um, if it's Zard White, it gets walled by Chansey. If it's Zard X, it gets walled by Quagsire. Um, Celestila gets beaten by Zapdos. And even if uh, Sabella has some status move, uh, Chansey has Natural Cure, potentially Heal Bella Aromatherapy. Uh, Mew is not going to be able to keep Rocks off the entire time because Rocks has more PP than Defog, and if Mew gets poisoned on top of that, it's going to be tough. Um, and Sabella's team looks quite slow, so I think that's a Z-move Bulu and a Scarf Lando. So Scarf Lando also does not break Karen's team at all. Um, like. Scissor should wall it, um, and even Mew or Zapdos sh should, uh, and Quack should wall it, but uh, I don't think Karen is gonna go Lando because there's the option that this has knockoff and you don't want to lose the leftovers. Um, so I assume that Karen would go to either Zapdos or Scissor. Okay, Mew works as well. It mo obviously, it most likely has Ice Beam. Yeah, that works. Yeah, this team is a bit annoyed by Zargard, so it makes sense that this would be fast Ice Beam Mew. And yeah, Karen is like a fatter type of team, so with a team like this, you want to defog to get. Um, like, even though Sabella has a Zardex, you want to have no rocks on your side because you're switching a lot with a team like this. The Toxic doesn't matter, it has Natural Cure. Um, basically, I'm going to be starting... I'm going to start skip, skipping turns in a bit because this game took a while. Uh, I mean, you can tell from the teams that it takes a while. Um, it's pretty much Karen switching into the mon... Like, Karen has, like I said, pretty much a counter to everything that Sabella has and just switches into the counter every time, or most of the time. I think that's one turn later. Yeah, like Karen can afford to play safe. This is a chance to burn the Bulu here. Um, does not get it, so it turns out to be a uh, sub Bulu. Um, like I said, it's most like easy move Bulu. But yeah, Karen can just go Scissor here. Um, I think he went for SD, yeah. <clears throat> so Karen is forced to Bullet Punch. And Karen doesn't know if it's Zarex or Y yet, so until Karen finds it out, it might be a bit tough because you cannot go hard into Quag. If it's Zarex, you get blown away by Solar Beam. Um, I feel like. Yeah, Mew was Mew was a fine mid ground play by Karen because Mew was still at full. So if it was that why yes, then Mew would have taken a huge hit. But if it was Zardex, um and the Dragon Dance, then Karen can afterwards just go on a quack. And if it's not Dragon Dance, if it's like if it just attacks hard, then Mew can eat up any like Mew can eat up any hit from both Zard. So I feel like that was a, yeah, that was a fine play. Until you find out which Zard it is, going into Mew first was fine because you don't want to go quack if you don't know if it's X or Y. And yeah, subbing there is completely fine as well. If the Zard stays in, you can figure out if it's X or Y. Because he would be tempted to Mega his Zard, because if he stays regular form, he would be weak to Scald, obviously. And yeah, Sabella's gonna haze eventually again. We can pretty much just skip through this. As Karen is gonna um, get the chance here to heal the chance to fall. Just in case it's Zard Y, um, it's, um, it's gonna be nice to have the chance here at fall. Karen is gonna switch here, I assume, to get rid of the Toxic. Or well, just S tosses. So that forces the Zard to roost. I'm um, going quick there is a fine play. If he was windy so I'll be dead, I would have been a beastly play though. But no one would have made that play. So yeah, Karen can afford to play it safe pretty much. Um, because it's a good matchup for Karen. And Sabella can try... Um, yeah, Sabella doesn't want to go for Wolves because if Karen... Exactly, because if his Mew gets poisoned, that would be, the end, that would be pretty annoying for him. Yeah. And if Karen went to the the Mew, then they would, they would have also synchronized the burn on Sabella's Mew. But yeah, more annoying, uh, Toxic from Crack would have been even more annoying. Because like I said, um, even if Karen's Mons get his status, um, this most likely has Heal Bill. Just from the way how Karen is playing this, or like, on a team like this, Heal Bill is appreciated. So, um, Karen can Toxic here, because if Sabella switches out, the rocks stay up. And if Sabella defox, Mew gets poisoned. Both is amazing, both... Um, in both cases, this is amazing for Karen. And Chansey can just go for a softball here. Because you want to stay healthy, right? Um, you can go for... Wait, did Chansey reveal Toxic? I don't remember. I think it's Seismic Toss, Softball, Rocks and Aromatherapy slash Heal Build Chansey, yeah. I don't, I don't think it has to reveal Toxic. Toxic is on Quag, yeah. The Zapdos might have... Heatwave only. It might not have. It might not have HPI since the Muse fast Ice Beam on this team to check stuff like Landon Zygar. So this is a free scissor again for Karen. Pretty repetitive. 
he subs up there but it doesn't accomplish anything he has these i'm just gonna start skipping because otherwise it takes forever so he goes for a plus two hour pummeling he can eat up a bullet punch but the scissor is really bulky and he can eat it up um we all know how bulky mega scissor is and the grassy terrain helps the scissor so karen can just bullet punch again because if sabella switches or just in general staying in with scissor gives it extra gives scissor more grassy terrain now scissor can you turn out because it's faster than celestealer goes into zap does waste two leash cpp um doubling and yeah, okay, not doubling, but going the correct does a really nice play though because um, threatens out the Mew, and knowing the Mew will not have a move to kill the Scissor, uh, I'm surprised that Sabala stayed in with the Mew and a potential Toxic there, but yeah, knowing that the Mew cannot kill the Scissor, it can most likely uh, it's most likely gonna have Ice Beam or some Mew run Earthquake, but on this team it's not gonna have Earthquake, I don't think so. But pretty much knowing that Scissor cannot kill, Mew cannot kill the Scissor, Karen could heal up the Scissor there, and. It is burned, yes, but it doesn't matter because um, Karen is going to be able to get rid of the status with a Chansey as a nice play by Sabella there, but Chansey does not... Okay, okay, okay. I thought you, um, Karen would just go for aromatherapy, but yeah, that's that's, yeah, that's smart, not risking anything. So switching to Zapdos is fine because you can threaten the with Heatwave. For a second, I thought Karen would just heal the status of the Scissor, yeah, but it's, it's smarter to go to Zapdos. Uh, because it's already revealed to be all out pummeling. If it was continental crushed, then the Zapdos would obviously be not a switch in. Um, because regular Stone Age even still does a good amount. And yeah, you can see um, Toxic is nice for Sabal to get off, but just from how Karen has been playing this, it's pretty obvious that Chansey will have a status healing move. So, um, there's the normal therapy. And now the status and the burn is he the burn is healed and the, the Toxic is healed. And yeah, I'm gonna start skipping turns. Um, I think that Bella did he double? No, he just horn leech into the scissor, the scissor U turns and the zap does. Uh, Zapdos gets lefty, so Bella can protect him, but it, yeah, not that, it, not that it really helps him. So um Sabella is trying to get his Mew paralyzed, I think, there. Because if Mew gets paralyzed, that means it cannot get toxic or burned. Which would be nice for Sabella. And yeah, Karen can just go get rocks back up here. And the Landers is most likely yeah, exactly, gonna keep U turning. Um I don't think the Lando is knockoff. If the Lando is knockoff, it would be nice to go for. Sabella is going to be forced to defog again, but Chansey can just get the rocks back up. Like I said, rocks has more PP than defog. Seismic tossing is completely fine mid ground play. Um, Sabella is using. Wait, I thought he would recover there. Yeah, you can switch out. Yeah, you can switch out with Regenerator here. Uh, so I assume he's going to go Celestealer here as Karen should get up the rocks. Seismic tosses again, surprised by that, but that ro there are the rocks. Uh, Craigslider comes out. Basically. Even if this is annoying with Leech Sheet, uh, Leech Sheet is eventually going to run out and Karen can switch between these fat amounts. Uh, Karen doesn't even have to waste PP. Um, if need be, Karen can switch between those four months and Celestealer. Or those, let's say those three. And yeah, now this is a free S toss again for Karen. Or uh, Rocks again if you predict uh, the default would be a good play. But yeah, Karen's just going to go for Rocks again. Um, if I was Karen, I would switch out because it's kind of a waste of your S toss if you do it versus a Pax because Pax has region, but okay, Karen S tossed anyway. Um, the Rocked again there, predicting the default, but mm, Sabala made a nice play in Wisping. Uh, okay, so it turns out to be off both. So, wow, I was wrong earlier when I thought that this Mew was not gonna have off quick. I mean, it has off power instead of off quick, but I thought it didn't have ground coverage. Uh, I mean, it was, um, the Zard, but no rocks up, can switch in Heatron like decently well. But like, some Heatron carry Toxic, so I guess it's fair, it's not the best check. But yeah, if it's Maggot and it's X, that would mean that it cannot switch in Heatron that... Like, it cannot switch in Heatron that well anymore, because Heatron carry off power. Um, and Pex gets destroyed most of the time by a Magma Storm of power trend. Like, they um, usually... They beat Pex, because they're on like Taunt, so you can recover. Um, yeah, so never mind. It makes sense to have a to have a ground move on the Mew, but pretty much, um, yeah, it's like I don't have to talk about anything about every turn. It's just Karen uh, wearing down Sabella's team. Now the Celestina is burned as well, um, and like I said, Sabella doesn't have anything to break Karen's team. And if Rocks are up, Sabella is gonna keep taking chip damage, and Karen can go for Toxic Key again in case the Mew stays in. As Mew defogged and stays in, oh, Karen Earthquake. Uh, Earthquake put it in the Toxapex there, I'm pretty sure, yeah. 
So back in the Zapdos here, I assume that if he goes for Leech, he wastes two more PP with the pressure ability. But yeah, let's start skipping a bit more. Uh, just Roost there. And yeah, the burn nerf is really helpful here as well for Kern. So Rocks are going to go back up, I assume. And Quag is going to come out here. Um, I feel like Karen assumed this was RX. I don't know why he SD even as a Quag. Um, it threatens, obviously it threatens the rest of the team, but the Quag has unaware, so it doesn't give a fuck. Um, I think Sabella predicted the Toxic, they went into packs, but Karen just went for Quag. Uh, Sabella is forced to switch to get his regenerator. Sabella can go for a Leech yes, but he loses two more PP. Um, I don't even know if you guys could see the animation because I'm skipping. But yeah, Karen can go for Toxic. If Karen ever catches the Mew on a Toxic, uh, when the Mew goes for Defog, then the Mew is on a timer as well. And that would be really bad for Sabella. But even if the Mew is not on a timer, Sabella just doesn't have anything to break uh, Karen's fat team. Um, Karen basically makes nice plays here. Breaks the Mew, goes back in the crack, can try the Toxic. And if Mew stays in... Which it does. Okay, Karen can scald in case... Scald, scald is a fine play. In case Sabella switches, you get some chip damage. And if Sabella stays in, you can also potentially get burned. Even though Toxic on the Mew would be better. Uh, Sabella doubles into packs to get more regen. I think Karen predicted the double and went for Scald here. Scalds again. So, like, Sabella doesn't want to go for Leech because the Zapdos would just come out and... Um, sap to Leech PP with pressure. Um, but I don't think I have to talk about every turn. It's like... Karen can just go back into Scizor now. Um, and Rocks are up, so Sabala cannot really double. Because if Rocks are. Like, and even if Rocks are not up and Sabala doubles, like I said, he doesn't have much to break. Karen's team, now he's forced to leash it because otherwise he's just getting too low on his Celestila. Okay, Flamethrower. Interesting. I thought he would leash you because he doesn't want to go too low. But yeah, not that it matters. This is just a matter of time till uh, Karen wins game one. This is game one, this is the best of three, obviously. It is. um. It's all G round 6 winners bracket here, if I'm not mistaken. I'm um, pretty sure I've uploaded the Sabala's round 5 games versus Googly and Karen's round 5 games versus Black Oblivion. Um, but there are some round 5 games, pretty sure, that I haven't uploaded yet for losers bracket. I have some of those live, like I said, they will be coming later. If my voice uh, is still there, I recorded like a 100 minute video earlier for the road to top 10. <laughs> but yeah, the rocks go back up here. Um, he defogged. Wait, were there even rocks on the field when he defogged? I don't think there were rocks on the field when he defogged. Yeah, he said misclick. Oh yeah, he said misclick. I was about to say what he did defog. Uh, he said misclick also. I don't think it matters. I don't think I can win. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, Quag is burned. That's completely fine for Kern. Lefties cancel the burnout. Um, rocks go back up. Karen can just go back to Scissor here. Goes in the Mew, Karen can U-turn here. Devox, Tanzig and Estos. Oh, we're almost everybody to get rid of the burn, yeah, that's smart. Rocks go back up. Karen goes back into uh, Quagsire. Dragon Claw does nothing, recovers up. Uh, recovers again here because you don't want to be too low and risk a crit. Devox, now if Karen toxic, Mew would be toxic, yup. And now Mew is on the timer. It's looking bad for Sabella. Um, yeah, Rocks go back up here, I assume. No, Aromatherapy. Yeah, Aromatherapy first was the, was the better play. 100% agree, my bad. You have to Aromatherapy, because if, if you don't Aromatherapy and your crack is poisoned, you give um, Sabella Zard X an opening to threaten your team. So you have to always Aromatherapy first and set up rocks later. And they're usually on there. Uh, Sabella is forced to switch. You can just scald the off quick here. Completely fine play. Switching out, breaking a wisp. Um, go rocks can go back up here. As uh, Karen just S tossed. He's gonna roost. Karen can scald off quick or double switch. Um, Karen just scald it. Rocks go back up here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, rocks go back up, back into Mew, forced to defog. But Estos, so forced to roost as well. Estos, Estos, bop, bop, bop. Um, Mew is forced out because Toxic is wrecking up. Mew cannot stay in forever. Estos plus Toxic is doing too much. Chansey gets Toxic, Chansey doesn't care. Sabella is forced to switch, otherwise he dies to Estos. Um, this gets regen, but Karen just switches out to get rid of the... Karen can sub here. Okay, it just called the fine as well. Um, yeah, Natural Q gets rid of the status. Sabala's forced to... S like, uh, he's either scalding or he's uh, gonna switch again. I think he's gonna he recover, yeah. So he just recovers, that just discharges. He's gonna Toxic here, I assume, but doesn't matter, like I said. Karen still has like four, 
I think four BP on Rolls every, maybe five. I think five. <coughs> I'm used force to heal here. Uh, Chancy can spam seismic toss. Mew defogs, but now Mew was forced to heal and rocks go back up. And Mew didn't heal, so Mew's at like um, nine percent of the rocks. Quack comes back out on Hazard. Um, pretty repetitive. Quack clicks recover. Rocks are up, so technically Karen could have S toss there. But going to Zapdos no Toxic is a smart play. Raise two Toxic PP. Uh, the Toxic also doesn't do too much damage if you don't stay in too long with the Zapdos. There's a, I think Karen's gonna roost here. Yeah. Um, Karen's gonna switch into Scizor here, I assume. Into Mew, okay. Uh, I thought just in case this is like knockoff that Scizor would overall be the safest play. But yeah, Scizor at 78, so it makes more sense to, to keep Scizor, to not go Scizor in case um, Sabella Earthquake is there because if Sabella breaks the Scizor and Earthquake. Um, then potentially Bulu can become a threat, even though there's also a Zapdos with Heatwave. And so he says, yeah, I can't win, he has to again. Um, he would be forced to roost, but Earthquake does more than roost, so he cannot roost, and Sabella just forfeits. Um, yeah, this was game one, and I'll um, show you guys game two. Let me pause it real quick. So we are back with game two. Karen Smith is a bulky offense top of Team Venus, or this time Sabella brings the same team. I assume this is a Bantar defensive stealer. Um, either Scarf Chomp or Scarf Greninja. If it's Scarf Gren, then either the Coco or the Chomp is the Zemo Fuser. If it's uh, Scarf Chomp, then this is most likely the Zemo Fuser. So we can go right into it. Sabella leads off with Landorus, and Sabella's gonna scout, have to scout here for a Scarf Greninja and switch into those Toxic Packs. So Karen predicts that goes for u -turn. Now Karen can go into Tapu Coco. Sabella's forced into his Bulu or his Landorus here. Let's see if Karen predicts that um, makes it early and makes it early aggressive play. He goes on the top of Bulu here. Um, Karen goes for Hidden Power Ice or Fire. I assume it's Hidden Power Ice because it would have also covered the Landris. And it's definitely Choice Specs damage. So Sabala's not, um, not gonna sack this. Sabala's gonna switch here. Um, Karen switches into Venusaur. I think scouting for if the. I don't know what Karen predicted there. Um, Karen potentially predicted the, this to be Scarf. Even though Sabala already used this team in game one. Like still scouting for Scarf was a fine play there because if Scarf Bulu, if it was Scarf Bulu, it would have blown away the, the Coco if the Coco stayed in. Um, yeah, so basically the Mew is gonna go for Will Wisp. Karen has no Will Wisp immunity, but Venusaur doesn't mind the burn too much since the burn. Burn got nerfed this Gen, and he can uh, Karen can fish, fish for poison on the Mew. Um, so Sabala can go into either the Pikes, the Steeler, or the Landers here um, because most Venusaurs don't carry Giga Rain at the moment. They carry um. A lot of the time, Leech Seed and Earthquake. Uh, Earthquake is to hit Heatran and also check stuff like uh, Calm and Majorna or Double Dance Majorna is what I should say. And yeah, so pretty much Sabala is going to go into one of these three months. Um, Karen could double into Coco because it would cover those two. So let's see what happens here. He goes on the Toxapex, there's the Leech Seed. I assume he's going to. Go for Skull here, expecting a switch into Coco. He doubles out into Landris, so that's a fire play. Um, this Landris is scarfed, at least, at least that, that's what it was in game one. So Karen has a few options here. Karen can predict this to go for Rocks or U turn and then stay in with Coco. If you predict this to go for Rocks, you go for HPIs. If you predict this to go for U turn, you go for T Bolt because T Bolt hits all these five members. Since this is already weakened, I think T Bolt would definitely do a lot. Um, Dazzling Gleam would also, Vault Switch would also be an option as a mid ground if you break the U turn. Um, but yeah, that's that's the aggressive play. The safe play option would be um, going to Sada Stila. I would definitely make, I would probably make the safe play, but yeah, Karen makes the risky play. And let's see if the T Bolt or the HPIs comes out. So it goes for HPIs. Um, so I'm pretty sure Karen predicted the Landris to stay in and go for rocks. Or Karen predicted. The, no, I don't think Karen predicted the Bull. I think it, Karen just predicted the Landris to stay in. Um, so yeah, Sabella can either just heal his Mew, or he can double into like his um, into his maybe um, Charizard, predicting the Venusaur to come out because the Venusaur is already burned. Um, Karen goes on the uh, into Greninja. I'm a bit surprised by that because I thought Karen would want to go into Venusaur since Venusaur is already burned. But yes, Greninja is. Uh, has already used U turn. Maybe it has uh, Dark Pulse, but Dark Pulse is really rare on Scarf Greninja. So, Sabala is most likely gonna go for just the Roost here to scout. Pretty sure Mew could even take a Dark Pulse because it's just Choice Scarf. 
Karen goes for a spike that works out in the sense that Mew is going to defog here most likely and Karen gets a free switch into something. Um, most likely in the top of Coco. Since the Grinja is revealed to be Choice Scarf, okay, Karen goes Novino. Since the Grinja is revealed to be Choice Scarf, I'm pretty sure that Garchomp is going to be SD, some sort of breaker chomp. Um, so Karen is either going to leech seed here or double into. Hmm. I was I was thinking double into Coco because it covers those two, but Sabella keeps going, goes in the land again on the Venusaur. So this time, I mean, it, it somewhat makes sense since, like I said, uh, most Venus don't carry Grass Step. Lando can eat up Sludge Bombs and stuff like that, but it would still be a bit risky because you get get poisoned. Um, yeah, so both either gonna go for Rocks or U-turn here. I think Karen predicted either one of the two plays because if he goes for Rocks, he's locked in. And Karen can go for SD here because Garchomp outspeeds the rest of uh, Sabala's team and put offensive pressure on. Like I said, it's most likely SD Z move, Breaker Chomp. And if um, he went for U John, then Karen would have gotten some chip damage or rough skin. So Sabala is most likely going to go to the Mew here or to the Celestila. Now, Celestila makes sense. It's, it's still healthy, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so now. Um, I assume Sabala is just gonna go for Leech Seed here because the Venus was burned and would have to take rocks if it comes out. Yeah, so I would just go for Leech Seed. He does just do that. So he can either go for Heavy Slam here, bring the Tyranitar, or he can just play safe and play safe and go for Flamethrower. Tyranitar comes out. There's the Flamethrower and this is Chess Bandit, so Stone is gonna do around 60. It is 62 actually. Sabala leads seeds and that miss is really unfortunate. He would have been able to take another Stone Edge after Protect with Leftovers, Lead Sheet Recovery, I'm pretty sure, but now he's not able to. So either he has to decide if he wants to sack his Celestealer or his Bulu. Or let. Um, no, no, I'm pretty sure he had to sack either Stealer or Bulu there, yeah. As long as it had. Yeah, Bulu is dead, Bulu dies. Now he goes in the Lander, I assume, to get the Intimidate, and then he can. Oh, he goes in the Mew, that works, yeah. Yeah, Mew was a fine play because it was locked into Stone Edge. Uh, Karen goes in the Greninja here, as I assume the Mew's just gonna um, throw up a... I'm surprised by the will -Wisp. I said he would go for off power because that's his attacking, that's his attacking move that he showed in game 1. That would do like better chip damage to the Greninja and to the Vino. That also wouldn't let the Coco in. I mean, I understand that Karen would not want to go Coco because rocks um, are up and if you take burn damage you get chipped down. But I would off power here, like I said, it chips down this, it chips down this and it doesn't let the Coco in for free and Coco is a big threat. But yeah, Karen is most likely going to U-turn here. Grace Jordan is up, so I guess Karen doesn't care too much about the burn. Sabella probably just went for off power. It's like the best thing he has to do in this turn. And like I said, he doesn't want to let the Coco come in for free. Um, that's a nice uh, critical hit, and so I assume Karen is just going to go for a synthesis here to play it safe and keep Venus so healthy. Um, yeah, he kind of has to defog for the Zara. It makes sense. So now he can either go to his, um, again, into one of those three months, uh, Pex, Stila, or Lando. I would most likely go to Pex, but I understand why he goes Landorus, because it also covers Karen doubling into Tapu Koko. So, like, Sabala cannot really give Koko free switch-ins, since Koko destroys his team if uh, Karen predicts correct. So he's um, most likely going to U-turn out here since he's lead seated. I don't think he's going to stay in. Karen predicts a U-turn slash rocks again and goes on the guard jump, gets some nice rough skin. Mew comes back out, so Karen is not gonna stay in obviously on a potential will o -Wisp. Makes a nice prediction there going for off power. So Karen is most likely gonna go for a lead sheet here to get some health back. And yeah, now Karen is probably gonna go for synthesis again. Uh, double lead sheeting would be a good play as well. Uh, exactly, that's a fire play. So this um, Zart, I think if it's a Dragon Rush set, it's like the I don't remember what moves it revealed, but lefties used the set SD, Flame Charge, Roost, Dragon Rush. And I've run a calc for you guys here, and it can Oko Mega, uh, not Mega Tarantar, it can Oko Band Tar at plus two. If it's max HP T Tar, um, it's a roll, but if it's no HP T Tar, that's 114 to 135. So, like, if he is that set, he can SD and blow T Tar away. He just has to hit, I mean, it's 75 accuracy, so I guess it's a bit risky. Um, but yeah, if Karen is most likely gonna go T Tar here. So, if he's that. Set he can either SD up here or if he's not that set, he can double out into Landers, doubling into Landers, covers the Tita. He makes that play, that's definitely a nice play. Um, Tita is a threat to him as well. Like Tita and Coco are like threats to Zabella. Yeah, this this team is like really kind of similar to the team that uh, Lefties used the other day. I mean, it's like only I think it's only two or three of the same months, but like the, the team had also a Bent Star and a Specs Coco. 
or was it? No, no, the team had a Zemo of Coco, never mind. I always mix it up. But yeah, pretty much, um, he U-turned on the Celeste, he let her get the Zart, and Karen is gonna go back to Tyranitar here. Oh, wow, Karen goes Greninja, I'm surprised by that. I don't know if Karen predicted that Flame Charge, but Greninja cannot do much to Zart. So, but I can just go for Roost here, like, I don't think Karen can do much. It's either gonna be Ice Beam or Pump, that, uh, so that's the best move that Karen has to hit the Zart. Since it's burned, any physical move will do no damage. Um, so like most of the time these carry Rock Slap, but Rock Slap would do no damage because this has f good Fizz Dev and it's burned. So he can, gonna, he's going to Roost again here because he wants to get his healthy. And he can um, go for a Dragon Rush here or for, yeah. Depending, like I don't know what his step move is. He just predicted, yeah he predicted the Greninja to stay in. I mean Roosting made sense as well, yeah he predicted the Greninja to stay in. So this is a fire play, I'm um, going for Earthquake. And I'm pretty sure, so Sabala has a free switch into Stila or into Landris here, right? But I don't think he's gonna go Celestila because Celestila lets in the top of Coco. So he's most likely gonna go into Landris here. Karen goes into Coco, makes a nice play. Um, if he went to Celestila there to get that back healthy, then he would have been in a rough position. I mean, no, he could have, no, 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 Celestila would have been a fine play. Because he could have gone for Protect. Then he wouldn't have gone lefties, he would have seen what Coco locks itself into. Coco would still have to take Sandstorm and then he could um, switch out after. So yeah, I think he could have gone under Celestia there. But uh, Landros, yeah, Landros I guess was a fine play as well. And I can see him going for rocks this turn. Breaking the Celestia. Rocks are U-turn, yeah, U-turns. So there's the Zard and the Tita is gonna come back out here. So, um, oh wow, wow, that's... So Sabala went for SD Britain the Tita. I'm really surprised by that. Um, so Karen kept going into Tita. I don't know. I think Tita, two times Karen went into Tita on this, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, now Karen mixes up the play. That's always nice if you like mix up your play to be um to throw your opponent off. Like like you show your opponent that you keep switching into one one, but then you change up your pattern. And um, that can that can be really nice to throw the opponent off guard. Um, that's definitely a nice play style. So this works out really nice for Karen. This is threatened out by by Earthquake here. But since it's a plus to um, Zard, I would just click Earthquake here if I was Karen. You don't want to play around with that, yeah. So even though he got the free switch into Celestila, and if you SD'd there and your Z-move, you could have threatened this way more. This was still a fine play from both players. I completely agree with this. So yeah, so I can just go for Leech Seed here. He doubles into Landris, wow. Surprised by that. So Karen just gets the rocks up and it's like, nah boy, I'm not switching. Um, I assume Sabala is not gonna go for rocks because he kind of has the defog for Zard. Uh, yeah, I assume he's either gonna U-turn or Earthquake. U-turns. Um, Karen, I assume stayed in, so Karen probably went for an SD slash. Yeah, yeah Karen probably went for an SD break in the the U-turn or the rocks from the land. That works out really nicely. And the Mew comes out, and the Mew's obviously gonna die to. Um, it will die to a Z move. So it depends on the Z move. If it's Z Fire Fang, it might not kill the Mew, but if it's Z Dragonium, um, Karen can just click it here and get a kill. Celestia is low, so Celestia would die, and yeah, everything else gets blown away. And Sabella needs this Mew to defog, so I assume Sabella is gonna sack the Celestia here, and then go back into his uh, Landris to threaten this out. So Karen just goes for Z move, Z Device Dying Drake, assume that was the Outrage. Uh, Lando's forced to click off quick here. Um, if Sabala clicks U turn, he's a beast. But yeah, Karen just sacks the Greninja, so it doesn't matter what Sabala clicks. And yeah, there's a free switch in the Celestia. There's a free Leech Seed slash a double into Coco. Double into Coco would have been a fire play. But Karen just heavy slams. Um, Mew's gonna have to defog here for the Zard, but Coco can come in on the potential either Roost or defog here. Yes. And Specs Coco is a threat here, so this is just um, kind of 50 50 type of thing. Um, if Karen HP Isis and catches the land on the switch. Oh, Dazzling Gleam might be the play that Karen makes because it covers the Zard and it covers the Lando. Because Zard can eat up a T Bolt because it resists that and it can eat up in Paw Eyes. So let's see. Um, if uh, Zabala predicts Electric Move, he goes either into Zard or Landorus. But yeah, if, if he's a break to Dazzling Gleam, he can also go on a Toxapex, that would be a wild play. He goes on a Toxapex, so he was either expecting the HPI or Dazzling Gleam, there was a fire play by Sabala, he got it correct. So he can heal or he can, um, oh that's a, that's fine, yeah. He Toxics. Um, so I think he predicted the Gachum to come out and Karen predicted the Recover. And now, 
Karen can click outward here and get a kill. Because the Mew is low, so like Sabala has no switch ins. Um Karen might just click off click playing it safe. Yeah, just clicks off click playing it safe. Um the only reason why I thought Outwitch was overall like safer to get a kill is because um Landers would come potentially come in an off quick and you're poisoned. But this works out for Karen and Let's see if Karen off quicks again or outrageous. This outrageous gets rid of the Mew. Outrage in case Sabala wanted to switch into Lando. Sabala is forced into Lando. I think they're gonna U-turn her off quick here, but this is pretty much over at this point. Um Well another tough ad matchup for Sabala and the uh, Leech Sheep miss on Tita was annoying, but Huh. Oh well. So this turn <laughs> I was about to say if Karen gets to play here correct, the game ends. He stays in predicting uh doesn't gleam more HPIs again. Um Karen doesn't gleam again expecting the Zard. Most likely. And this turn I think Sabala's gonna double into Zard. Because Karen is not gonna stay in here. Wait, Karen stayed in expecting a double. Never mind. Wow. Okay, this game is wild. <laughs> he gets a burn, so this actually he actually can get rid of the threat of Coco. So he, Karen has to switch. It's locked into Dazzling Gleam. Karen can go for synthesis here. Uh Lichi does fine as well. Yeah. Um, I would leech seed again here if I was Karen, not gonna lie. Does Karen leech seed again? Karen sludge bombs. Ooh, that's a fire play. It's a crit. Um, that is unfortunate, but Coco won at this point, so it didn't matter. Goes into Tyranitara. Do we see the step now? Roosts. We will now see if the Zard, what type of step the Zard has. Oh no, well, fuck, show me a move, dude. Yeah, this gets 2 KO'd, so he has to sec- Yeah, he has to sec this. And go into his Scarf land, though. And Karen can just go and sell Steel and the game's over at this point. And yeah, Karen can just click Leech Seed here. So he sacks this. And you can go to Zart, but Coco wins with Specs Dazzling Gleam, I'm pretty sure. These up off pixel sealer that's really interesting to hit a uh, hedron and magnet zone. I've used that before as well. That means, um, yeah, earthquake does around the same that uh, Zard's roost yields, like, yeah, exactly. That's like 49 to 51. So, pretty much, the ball I cannot set up on that. And yeah, teachers, yeah, you see, both dragon rush. I wasn't wrong. I don't, I don't remember if you revealed it in game wrong. That's why I was, that's why I wasn't 100% sure. Um, yeah, Desla would have killed the Zard. Um, I think Karen would have, like, yeah, Tita would have died to Dragon Rush, but yeah, Coco just won from there. Thank you guys for watching. Um, my voice is kind of dead, but I'll try to um, get another live upload with the Smog to shit for you guys, like a live tournament game. Because I know you like those more than the replays. But I hope you still enjoyed. Smash that like button if you want to see uh, more content. Um, yeah, what should I call it? That set is really cool, not gonna lie, that Zard set. But Sabala got two tough matchups, and yeah. Karen didn't misplay too much. Or like, like Karen played is fun, is what I'm trying to say. Obviously, Karen didn't misplay. Um, like, game one was like even a uh, better matchup for Karen. This was also a rough one for Sab Sabala. I don't know how, how I should call him. But yeah, this means um, Karen is, I think, around seven winners bracket now. And Sabala would, is uh, still an OT, but he's gonna be in the losers bracket. Um, so I don't want to spell up, spoil out who else is in loser's bracket because I haven't uploaded all the other games. So stay tuned for that if you haven't. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys haven't checked out all the games yet because, um, yeah, like, I know some of you enjoy it more when they come live to you. Unfortunately, this one wasn't live. I don't know why I'm still rambling. Um, congratulations to Karen. Karen is, like, was not really that well known in the tournament scene and Karen uh, is still in winner's bracket. And the only other person left in winner's bracket, um, I forgot. Who was left in Wunas bracket? Um, Shoka, um, who also was not that well known, like he was known as a black white player before. Shoka and Karen are like still left in Wunas bracket. Um, are those the two only? Let me check. I think that those are the two only people left in Wunas bracket. Let me check real quick. Um, uh, depending on uh, if Shoka wins this game, Shoka hasn't played his game yet. Okay, you guys can see here. I don't spoil anything because I already uploaded CLs and Shoka's games from the last round, I'm pretty sure. 
Um, the other games that I didn't upload, the loser's bracket is right down below there. So yeah, see, I was showcased the other theories from winner's bracket. So yeah, Karen and the winner of this are the only two people left in winner's bracket. So Karen, if Shoka beats CL, which he definitely can because Shoka is playing, uh, Shoka is on a roll, he's playing super well. So that would be crazy if we would see um, Karen was a Shoka in the next round. Because like both players, like I said, were not that well known. As, uh, like Shoka was known for Black White, but like not for Sun and Moon. So and Karen is like new on the tour scene as well, like I said. So it would be crazy to see both of those in like the last round of Runa's bracket. Um, obviously, but um, they could meet again then in, in uh, grand finals because whoever wins of those two guys uh, in the next round. The win, like the winner of CL was Shoka plays Karen in the next round, and the winner of that series is in Grand Finals. And the loser of that series will still have to play someone else from the winners. The loser of that series has to play the winners from the people that are still in losers bracket. That was a bit complicated to say, especially uh, since my English is kind of bad. But yeah, thank you guys for watching.